The Paul Leslie Hour, helping people tell their stories. And now, your host, Paul Leslie. Hey, it's me. You are listening to The Paul Leslie Hour. If you've ever gotten enjoyment, inspiration, or information, consider becoming a patron. Go to patreon.com slash the Paul Leslie Hour. On this episode, we're joined by a man whose words and music have found their way in the hearts and minds of people everywhere. Paul Overstreet is a Grammy Award-winning singer-songwriter. He is a native of Mississippi. He's written or co-written more than two dozen top ten songs, and some of the most celebrated artists of our time have recorded his songs. George Jones, Randy Travis, Tanya Tucker, Keith Whitley, Allison Krauss, Blake Shelton, Kenny Chesney, Brad Paisley, and many more. In 2003, Overstreet was inducted into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame. Some of the songs he wrote or co-wrote include Forever and Ever Amen, On the Other Hand, Some Beach, When You Say Nothing at All, many, many songs. It's an honor to welcome singer, songwriter, performing and recording artist Paul Overstreet. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, You're welcome, Paul. It's good to be talking to you. It's an honor. I'm hoping you can kind of paint a picture with words. What was it like (laughs) where you're from when you were growing up? Oh, it was very rural. My earlier years, I mean, pretty much we lived in the country in, uh, on the Gulf of Mexico, um, back in the bayou area and the rivers, you know, my dad and all were hunters and, uh, we had a garden stuff like that. And my mom and dad's divorced. And I, my stepfather had a place on the bayou that he lived. So we moved in there. And, uh, so we grew up hunting and fishing and, water skiing and everything down on the bayous and in the river out there uh, near the Gulf Coast. I mean, you could get out there by water pretty easy out to the Gulf. Camping, camping, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> A lot of outdoors, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. We we had three channels on the TV. We had country radio and <laughs> we had a lot of records. So Hank William records, all kinds of people like that. Well, tell us about the music that you love the most. Well, I've always liked, uh, well, I I mean, the thing that made me decide to be a songwriter, I think, was probably more or less the Hank Williams story. When I was eight years old, we went to the Sanger Theater down in Biloxi, my mom, my stepfather, me, and watched that movie. And I thought it was the most incredible thing that a guy could take his guitar and his imagination and write a song and make a living at it. Who could dream, you know, <laughs> of such a thing? Right. But I grew up I grew up with that kind of music. Also, we had Elvis Presley, Ricky Nelson. Then along came, you know, we got to rock and roll. As I got to be a teenager, I listened to Doobie Brothers. And I like guitar, like more acoustic song, singer-songwriter stuff. Jim Croce, I was a big fan of his and uh, things like that. And, So I was, you know, I wasn't sure where to go with that kind of music, but I wound up in Nashville and I learned a lot more about country music, which was a great education and learned how to write songs from other songwriters. I mean, I was writing songs all along, but they, they kind of shared with me how they were doing it for the radio. And so I picked up a lot of things from my co-writers. And so I'm certainly thankful to having those people uh, walk in my life for a little while, you know. Mississippi is a is a coastal state, and just prior to doing this interview, I was listening to your album Somewhere in the Caribbean. Yeah. And yeah. also, the title track of that uh, it has a great music video that I want everyone to check out. What was the inspiration? What got you thinking, let's put all these songs that are beach-centric <laughs> together um you know i started my wife and i started going to the cayman islands we were invited there to go scuba diving and so we went we started going there maybe a week or two weeks every year and then eventually we 
just made that our second home. And because of that, I was writing some of those songs and people were recording them, Kenny Chesney, Blake Shelton. Uh, they were recording our island songs. And so that's how I wound up with that group of songs. And I thought one day I was looking at the songs and I thought, well, you know, they didn't cut all these songs I was writing for them. So why don't I just put them on a project? And so I started developing Somewhere in the Caribbean. Great collection of songs. Thank you. Just a moment ago, you were mentioning these co-writers, and we just had Don Schlitz on this show. Oh, wonderful. Tell us a little bit about him and how you met him. I was writing with Tom Schuyler, Fred Noblock, and we started uh, doing some songs together at the Bluebird, just performing, because we were all at the same publishing company. And we decided, what instead of just going and each of us playing our own song in the round, why don't we work up harmonies and backgrounds and help each other? And so that's what we did. And then people started going, man, you guys are a group. And Tom and and uh, Don Schlitz was part of the, when we do in the round, we do four people. And so it was Fred, Tom, myself, and Don Schlitz. And so Don just mentioned one day, maybe we should write together. And I was like, okay, that sounds good to me. And so we started writing. And then it worked so well, we started doing two days a week, every week. And we were very fortunate with the songs we were writing. And we had a lot of common ground. What would you say is your greatest well of inspiration? Uh, well, there's a lot of things happen in your life. And sometimes, I mean, that was the coolest thing about Don and I writing together is we would sit in a room and sometimes just talk about what was going on with us. And at that point, we would find something within our conversation that we thought was interesting to write about. So I think a lot of it is real life. And sometimes you, you know, you have the creative freedom to add and adapt, but but it starts with something that actually happened. Well, what about the song Some Beach? Where did that song come from? Uh, actually, the the verses and stuff like the uh, first verse was just some images that we, Rory and I, Rory Teeth and I wrote that song. And we were actually Kenny Chesney was, they called me and said, he's doing a whole island project and they need songs for it. And so I told Rory and we met for coffee one morning. We were talking about what kind of songs we could write about the beach and the uh, islands or whatever. And, and we just realized that that topic had been beaten up so much <laughs> that it had been used so much. We were like, <laughs> man, what can you say? And at some point Rory goes, some beach, somewhere, you know, and I was like, and then we just started in, but it was, it was just the way. And then we just came up with the verses and a lot of those images are from, you know, my, some of my experiences in the islands, but probably everybody has those experiences. I'm sure Rory did too. So it was easy to talk about that, but we pitched it. We pitched it to Kenny. I played it for him backstage in Washington at one of his shows after the show we're back there and he just put his head right by my guitar listened to the whole song and i thought well he he loves this thing he's going to record it but he, he he chose not to so our song player melissa key took it over and played it for blake shelton's producer bobby braddock at the time and bobby liked it and and they recorded it on blake <laughs> as you were mentioning blake shelton ended up recording that song and there have been so many artists, so many great artists that have recorded your songs. George Jones, the late Keith Whitley, uh, you know, you could go right down the line. But I'm curious to know, and this is maybe a difficult question, who do you think did the best version of a song you wrote or co-wrote? Randy Travis, probably the first time I heard heard him sing was on the other hand and Kyle Lenning had produced that record and I thought it was one of the best country records I'd heard in a long time he had that same kind of voice that George Jones had when you heard him sing you knew who it was and you recognized it immediately it wasn't like anybody else 
and it, and he sang such good country little chops in his voice so that was probably the the, the best country uh, rendition of one of our songs and then of course he did forever and ever amen which was it was a monster of a record oh yeah and if you listen really if you listen really close to forever and ever amen you'll hear me singing the backgrounds on that record <laughs> oh yeah yeah on that note it's pretty incredible the people you've gotten to write with and then also experiences like that recording a background vocal on on one of Randy Travis's records is there anyone you're dreaming of collaborating with because not only do you make records but also you write with people in any capacity performing recording anyone that you would really really like to work with that you haven't yet um you know that's always that's I'm always running into people that I think are fun collaborations and and we always talk about doing that and in Nashville, we have a lot of opportunities, you know. I think uh, some of the people that write with Ed Sheeran come to town every now and then to write. And recently I got to write with Ronan Keating, who sang When You Say Nothing at All in the Notting Hill movie. John Slitz and I wrote that song. And it was it was just a great time just to sit down with Ronan and write and get to know him. And he's a great guy. And... He plays a lot of golf, too. <laughs> As I told you earlier, I'm on the golf course right now. So I'm letting the guys play <laughs> play while I talk to you. Are you a big golfer? You know, I've played a lot of golf in my time, and today I'm struggling a little bit because I haven't played in months. I've just been really, really busy traveling. You are a great singer. I was listening to some of the recordings that you have made, and I'm curious to know, who are your vocal influences? Oh, <laughs> well, there's all kinds of them. You know, Paul Davis was one of my favorite co-writers, and his inflections were, I mean, he's from Mississippi as well, and his inflections were a huge influence on me because I'd known his music long before I met him. And... I always like the way he said things. I like Jim Croce, too. I mean, like his kind of singing. I like Gordon Lightfoot. I like James Taylor. I liked George Jones. And I liked a lot of those guys. So I think and there's a lot of those influences in what I do. And, and I think sometimes they all appear in a different song. It all depends on what the song needs. And and sometimes I'll hear different influences, like somebody else saying something. And then and when I sing, I don't know I'm doing it. It just happens. I think a case could be made for the fact that you are both from Mississippi. You are both in the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame. And you've both written songs about the islands and the beach. What would you think? Or has it ever crossed your mind to try to co-write with Jimmy Buffett? It has, actually. And Jimmy and I have talked, and I've sent him a couple of songs that I've written just via, you know, text or email. And, uh, but we've never, you know, we've never really gotten together to write. It would be fun, though. But he's a, he's a really good writer, I think. He approaches the subject matter from so many different directions. It just, uh, it's just really cool. Maybe that'll happen. I, I have a feeling if you did, if you guys did, you would write something really great. Yeah, I think so. I think we would. <laughs> On the note of the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame, you were also recently inducted into the Mississippi Songwriters Hall of Fame. Yes, I was the first. I was the first inductee, so it was a it was a unique thing for them. They were just getting started, and so I guess they used me for a guinea pig. <laughs> So I'm going to jump in and, and help be a part of that. I think that Mississippi Songwriters Hall of Fame could really grow. We have so many great Mississippi songwriters that have been here in Nashville, but just all around. we got Jim Weatherly, Mac McAnally, Paul Davis, Fred Noblock. And it goes on and on. There's just so many. B.B. King. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just a lot. 
And uh, we also have Bobby Gentry. Oh, yeah. What are your memories from when you were inducted into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame? Well, it's kind of all a blur. I didn't realize it was going to happen. My wife knew, but I didn't. The first time I was nominated, I was nominated in a category with Bob Dylan. And I pretty much said, hey, I'm voting for Bob Dylan. <laughs> but he wasn't really in the country music thing, but they, people in Nashville really like his, his style and his writing. And so it kind of, uh, I knew he would win that. And then the next year I was nominated and I thought, well, maybe the same thing had happened. But fortunately I was inducted in the hall of fame and I, you know, nowadays everybody has this really great speech they put together. I didn't have one. I just kind of went up there in a blur and said a bunch of things and then got off the stage. <laughs> I'm hoping you can tell the listeners a little bit about your faith albums. Yeah. You know, uh, I was writing, I had a transformation in my life around uh, 1984, something like that, 83. I'd just gotten into, I, I don't know, I think I was a little bit too much business minded about the music business and not enough life minded. and when I realized that that was stealing a lot from me, I just, I was actually willing to give up the music business if I felt like that's what, you know, was required of me to get my life straightened out. And uh, fortunately that wasn't what was in the, in the future. I got to do what I love to do, which is making music and, and at the same time get my life changed a little bit. And that's, I started making, writing songs about that. And then I got into this uh, Bible study fellowship program, and I was in that for nine years. And we read that Bible through very thoroughly. <laughs> and I just uh, loved all the stories. And one of the songs that Don Slitz and I wrote was Dig Another Well, which was right out of those studies. And so uh, the that started happening in, uh, Franklin Graham heard some of those songs and said, I want you to do a whole album for me, for us to, you know, just to have. And so I went in and recorded it and he sponsored it. And, and so we, you know, I traveled with him on some of the crusades and sang a lot of those songs. And that was a call living by the book, that, that album. What is the best thing about being Paul Overstreet? Ah, uh, <laughs> good. I don't know that question, but you know what? My wife and I, we've been married now 34 years and, and we have six children and they are, they are just really, really good people. And we're so fortunate there and we've had a great time raising them. And I'm glad I didn't miss that. So I think that's probably one of the best things. And and now just having the freedom to write songs that I, that I, I used to, I love being in my studio. That's kind of what I, that was my vision when I was coming to Nashville was to have a studio, record my songs, put them out and radio would play them. And I'd get to do that over and over again. And I've done that, but you know, it's a little more complicated than that. Cause I didn't know that once you put a record out, people want you to go tour. <laughs> so, <laughs> That interrupted my studio time, but, you know, I get in there every chance I can. Are you working on anything in the studio at the moment? I am. Yeah, I've done a lot of re-records of uh, songs that I had hits with because I, you know, when I was recording those, it was with RCA and, and they sometimes they've gotten to a point where they didn't have them out on the market anymore. And so I just thought, well, I might as well re-record these. And so I'll have them for our people who want these songs and, and these records. And so I've been doing that. And that that's a new album that'll come right after the, the Sun Beach album because I had them both going at the same time. And I'm just now finishing up that other country album. And then I'll do another one like that as well. But just wanted to get back to the roots of my first album, like So In Love, where it's just every song is just encouraging and you know talks about good things and i i just think people like that kind of a record from me so i'm i'm going to do it for the audience that cares and wants that record 
I always like to end the interviews. I like to give the guest the stage. And it's not just limited to the music business or songwriting or performing or things like that. What would you say to anyone who's tuned in? Well, Paul, you put me on the spot here. <laughs> I, You know, I think life is about being happy and being happy with where you are and what you're doing. And In our business, we have a lot of rejection. We get a lot of no's and very few yeses. In my life, I've been fortunate to have a lot of yeses that meant something and were successful, like songs and things like that. And so when things aren't at that point in your career or in your life, you, you kind of still have to find things that make you feel good and things that you can do that and be around people that make you feel good and friendships, just getting to know different people and meeting new people. Those things are just great to me. And so I enjoy that. And as I get farther down the road, harder it is to remember everybody's name, but I remember their face. And it's, I don't know, it's just a good life. You know, when you just do what it is that you feel like you're supposed to do, not what everybody else thinks you ought to be doing. Well put. Everyone out there, they can visit Paul overstreet.com pauloverstreet.com sir paul yes sir thank you very much i really appreciate you taking time thank you paul and i'll just add one little thing is we're just now waking up to social media in the last year and a half and i never even realized but i had a youtube page and we never put anything on it <laughs> we never <laughs> used it so now we're going to open that up and i won't put some videos on there for people to see and contact so check out, just it'll be on YouTube, Paul Overstreet, and hopefully we'll get some stuff that'll kind of let you know a little more about us and the music we do. I think it's Paul, it's YouTube.com slash Paul Overstreet Music. Probably. That's it. Yep. Okay, great. <laughs> so there's probably not anything on there now, but we can put stuff on it. All right. We're just now getting to that point, so it'll be happening. Yeah. And thank you, Paul, for the time that we get to talk. My pleasure. And I uh, hope there's a, a next time and have a great time on the golf course. Thank you. I just want to hit them straight and long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Until next time. All right. Talk to you later, Paul. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Padida, the pumpity boor, a petty canals, a jib, pop, kill, a canals, a gill, a bond, a good little thing, a jig, a monkey, but is a yell, ya hunger. A yang, a second, back in the wool, ye dug a goo, a set, a god, a ing, a rock, a tang, a lang, a ball, a kick, a good bye.